You are listening to the Super Mom is Getting Tired podcast. I'm your host, Tori Henderson, and this is episode 123. All links and show notes can be found by going to lifecoachingforparents.com slash 123. Welcome to the Super Mom is Getting Tired podcast. This show is designed for moms who invest everything into parenting, but get overwhelmed, lost, and resentful. Listen and learn how to unburden yourself, feel calm, full of energy, and in control. I'm your host, master certified life coach, teacher, and recovering super mom, Tori Henderson. Hello, super moms. Bonjour. It is Tori Henderson. I am back from my whirlwind trip to Europe, <laughs> four days in Europe. It was very fast. But super exciting. I am now officially a citizen of Luxembourg. So you can come visit me in my little grand duchy someday, maybe. I don't know if I'm going to live there. I just thought it would be cool to have the ability to live and work in the EU if I choose to someday and for my kids to be able to live and work in the EU and their kids. So we reclaimed our citizenship and it was super fun. And we got then I've been back. We got a lot happening here at the Life Coaching for Parents. It's been busy. I've got a new webinar coming up called Stop Nagging and Repeating Yourself. So one of the questions I ask when moms ask to join my private Facebook group, Super Mom is Getting Tired Facebook group, before they can join, I ask them some questions. And one of them is, what drains your energy the most? And by far, the number one response is the constant nagging, reminding, and repeating myself. Basically trying to get your kids to do things is exhausting and drains our energy. So I'm going to do a webinar to teach you the exact things you need to do so that you never have to nag again, so that your kids will listen to you and obey you the first time you ask which is going to free up your energy so much so that you can enjoy the relationship that you have with your kid and not feel like you're constantly having to police them and chase them around and basically take on a role that none of us really enjoys as this nagging mom. So be prepared in May. It's going to be May 10th for a very practical webinar with concrete tools that you will take away and start practicing right away. You can register for this webinar by going to lifecoachingforparents.com slash no hyphen (laughs) nag. So no dash nag at the end of lifecoachingforparents.com is the website to go to to sign up for this webinar coming on May 10th. So today I'm going to be asking or answering a question from a super mom who says, no matter how much I give, they still want more. Has anybody else ever been in that situation? You give, you give, you give, you do for them, you spend time with them, you give them a love and attention and food and care and nurturing, and they're never sated. (laughs) They are never sated. Stated, they keep coming back for more. It is very draining. And since this is the Super Bomb is Getting Tired podcast, this is something we haven't really talked about yet. Especially, I want you to stay tuned for the Super Mom Kryptonite today because it doesn't come across my desk very often. But when it does, it is such a big kryptonite that, and it's very hard to articulate because it's totally invisible, but it is an energy drain. And so if you feel depleted and exhausted after being around your kids, please stay tuned for today's super mom kryptonite. Okay, let's get started. The question from super mom Missy reads, I've given my three daughters everything. I think I've been a good mom and they tell me so. I know I'm very lucky that my three adolescent daughters love me so much and still want to be with me. But sometimes, I wish they were more independent. I hear moms complain about their daughters hanging out in their room too much or always going out with friends. I kind of wish my girls were more like that. 
It seems no matter how much of my love, companionship, attention, or support I give them, they still want more. They are 12, 15, and 17, and they still want me to cook for them, watch TV with them, go shopping with them, do their hair, or just hang out with them. When can I expect them to want more independence? I'd really like to have some free time to do the things I want to do. Missy. Okay, Missy, thank you so much for these questions. And thank you so much to everybody who writes in. If you've got a question, you can go to lifecoachingforparents.com slash record my question with hyphens in between those. And you can send me a little voicemail. You can go to lifecoachingforparents.com slash contact. I think and send me a written request. Lots of ways to get in touch with me. You can send me a Facebook message, Instagram DM, you got it. You name it, we got it. (laughs) Give me all your questions and we will answer them on the podcast. So today's parent educator answer is usually how I like to start. We kind of want to take a look at just the normal social and emotional milestones because the question is, when can I expect them to be more independent, right? So if we look at the social and emotional milestones, we expect to see in girls it would be normal to expect a push towards independence and away from mom at the ages that these girls are, 12, 15, and 17, right? Those are the perfect ages. We kind of expect to see this uh, push towards independence. Between the ages of 10 to 14 in particular, girls tend to create or sometimes just crave more emotionally intimate relationships with their peers, This is a practice for intimacy later on. It is a way for them to push away from mom and dad, um, but not be fully on their own yet, right? They're not quite ready to stand on their own. And so you might see the advent of a, a tight group of friends, a clique, or possibly a best friend situation where you, you know, dress alike, you talk alike, you text 10 times a day, 100 times a day, whatever. So those are kind of things we would expect to see between the ages of 10 to 14. And they're a sign that the kid is ready to move into taking steps towards independence. So some cultures have a very significant rite of passage to help a child shift their identity from child to adult. I'm going to a B'nai Mitzvah this Friday or this Saturday. So that's a very significant event that we say, okay, you are now officially an adult. But in the absence of a ceremony, it takes on a more gradual process. So this tight friend group can help the child feel more comfortable being away from mom and dad, and they can the child can practice independence without being completely thrust out into the big bad world on their own. So even though it's developmentally normal and appropriate to see this shift, social distancing and the damn pandemic has put a wrench into a lot of the normal developmental expectations that we have for teens. So if your daughters have made it through ages 15 to 17 and still consider you their best friend, I would say it's time for you to encourage independence in them. It might seem like a wonderful thing. I know there's moms listening, or maybe they've already stopped listening because they're like, I wish that was my problem. My daughter doesn't want anything to do with me. Maybe they've already dropped off because it's painful because they remember that close connection they had with their younger daughter and they no longer have it. And so it might seem like a wonderful thing that these girls you have want you with them all the time. But if you aren't seeing them take on new challenges, making new friends, striving towards independence, taking emotional risks, then you might need to act like a mama bird and nudge them out of the nest so that they can see how capable they are of using their wings. It's just like if you had a toddler who wanted to be carried around all the time. That happens. <laughs> Believe me. And this toddler really wasn't interested in learning to walk. You would still find a way to balance your child's desires to be carried around with what you know is good for them. You know it's good for them to learn how to walk and be on their own. And so you would find 
ways to balance it. You'd put them down. You would give them big smiles and cheer them on and praised as they walked towards you or cruised furniture. You would celebrate their developmental milestones, taking their first steps by taking pictures and sharing their successes with other family members. You know, when grandma comes over, you're like, hey, look at the baby's taking his first steps and isn't it exciting? And so we do these things to help encourage our kids towards independence. Not in a mean way, like I'm never going to pick you up until you learn how to walk. You know, when your kid gets tired, you put them in the stroller. And after a day of developing this new skill, you would hold them and kiss them and put them to bed so they could get rest and recuperation and do it again the next day. As a mom, our job is to love, nurture, protect, provide, while also encouraging our kids to grow into independent adults away from us. If your teens aren't actively seeking independence, it's time for mama to encourage it, praise it, celebrate it, and hold them accountable. The love, care, and nurture can come after your teens demonstrate that they're taking on new adult challenges, trying something new and uncomfortable, maybe going outside their comfort zone, you know, things that are just hard for teenagers to do, like trying out for the school play or asking a new friend to come over to your house or walk to Starbucks after school, asking them if they want to study together for a test. Those are things that are scary and difficult. And we want to encourage our kids to do those independent activities that maybe they don't really want to do because they're afraid of getting rejected or they're afraid of social backlash or they're embarrassed and all that stuff. So we want to make sure that our kids are always growing and learning, not avoiding challenges out of fear. In fact, we want to make sure we're doing that too. We don't want to just sit home and avoid taking on new risks and like live vicariously through our kids. We want to take on new challenges too. So here are some examples of developmentally appropriate independent activities for 12 to 17 year olds. Now, I just came up with these off the top of my head. I kind of wrote some down here, but if you have more, I would love to hear from you. So please go to my Super Mom is Getting Tired Facebook group and share your thoughts on activities that 12 to 17 year olds can do that are kind of signs towards independence. So here's what I came up with. Cooking for themselves and for the family. Cleaning up their room, their bathroom, the kitchen, the community space, cleaning up the yard, doing yard work for your house or for others, right? You could offer to mow the neighbor's lawn or rake their leaves or um, help out them around their house. It doesn't have to be just your family. It could be other families. It could be grandparents and seniors. It could be babysitting, pet sitting, house sitting, riding public transportation by themselves, I think would be excellent, or with a friend, you know, if they're not quite ready to do it by themselves. Applying for jobs, having job interviews, like that's a huge growth milestone. Uh, Making appointments for themselves at the dentist, at the hair salon, you know, paying you know, handling the payment when you go to get a haircut, uh, managing that themselves instead of asking mom to do it for them. Hosting and coordinating parties and gatherings for friends. That's a good developmental milestone that involves a lot of kind of planning and project management and emotional risk, putting yourself out there. Um, Traveling without mom and dad, traveling to go visit friends or cousins or siblings or grandparents, walking to the store to buy groceries or taking the bike, riding the bike to the grocery store, riding the bike to the, their own dentist appointment or you know, to their soccer practice, whatever, things like that. Talking to teachers about their schoolwork, you know, taking over that relationship where they get to talk to their teachers and manage their own schoolwork. So those are some ways that we can encourage our kids to be more independent, um, you know, kind of managing their finances, thinking about spending money, earning money, investing money. 
So sometimes when we've created a cozy little nest for our children, it makes sense that our kids wouldn't want to leave the nest. (laughs) But like all moms in the animal kingdom, Our job is to teach our kids how to survive in the wild. If we don't create some constructive adversity, our kids may never get to see how capable they truly are. So I really believe we need to encourage our kids to seek out challenges that are difficult, embarrassing, awkward, and uncomfortable. Learning to drive a car fits all of those things, right? Huge risk, hugely awkward, very stressful. And then we get to praise them and be super proud of them for their efforts and learning to do that. So, you know, it's hard for kids to be confident until they've developed competence. They don't get competent without making mistakes first. So making sure we're giving them room and permission to make mistakes is a great goal for a mom to have. So if Missy's girls are taking on new challenges, maybe they are growing and adulting and doing all of these things, they just want mom by their side. Well, then we move on to the life coaching answer. So today's life coaching answer with what gets in our way from encouraging our teens to be more independent? Two things. A belief that it's our job to make them comfortable and a belief that it's not okay to prioritize our needs over theirs. You can hear it in Missy's question. Missy writes, I want them to not need me so much. She's saying what she wants. They want me to be with them. So we've got, here's what mom wants. Here's what the girls want. It's great you know what you want. I love that you know you want them to need you less. That's the first step. But who is currently getting what they want in this situation? The girls. And why? Why do they get what they want instead of you getting what you want? Because there's got to be some kind of belief in there, Missy, that says, it's my job to make them happy or I'm supposed to ignore what I want. I'm supposed to prioritize them, that their desires are more important than mine. Just because they want you, are you somehow required by law to obey them? (laughs) They don't have to get what they want just because they want it. Like, it's okay for you to have your desires here. You know, it's very different when kids are little. Like, of course, your job when you have a baby or a toddler is you don't want them to feel uncomfortable because their discomfort is a sign of an unmet need, right? They're crying because they're hungry or they're cold or they're tired. So they're communicating to us what their needs are. And absolutely, our job is to prioritize their needs over ours because they're totally helpless they have to depend on us. And that's their means of communication. But as your kids grow into adolescence, those things are no longer true. You don't have to prioritize your kids' needs over your own. And your job is not to make them happy and comfortable. In fact, your job might be to make them uncomfortable. So let's imagine what would happen if you did whatever you wanted. Let's just pretend that your whole day is crafted exactly the way you want it to be. No more prioritizing other people's desires above your own. You just get to arrange your day the way that works best for you. What would your mornings look like? How would you start your day if you could do it your way? How would you spend your afternoon and evening? if your only job was to prioritize your own needs? What would you do on the weekend if it was 100% totally up to you? Can you see the problem? (laughs) If you're trying to imagine this and visualize this, you might have a hard time picturing it because one, you might not know what you want. Like here, Missy's pretty clear. She's like, I want them to leave me alone. But 
let's imagine you could just do whatever you wanted. She might not know what she wants. She might not know how to spend her afternoon because she's just spent the last 17 years ignoring her own desires. So of course, it might be a little hard to get it back. Or when you imagine this scenario, you might notice that your girls are a little uncomfortable. They might not like you flipping this dynamic on them. But that's exactly what we want. We want your girls to be uncomfortable because your nest is a little too cozy. So we want to nudge them out of the nest using this natural constructive adversity. Like, hey, I'm not getting everything I want all the time. When your girls are hungry and no one's cooking for them, they might try cooking. They might burn something. They might break a dish. They might explode something in the microwave, (laughs) which just a little uh, public service announcement. Just because the internet tells you you can hard boil an egg in the microwave does not mean it's true. Please do not attempt that and tell your teenagers not to hard boil an egg in the microwave. But this burning things, exploding things, breaking things, like this is what the road to independence looks like. This is the messy, imperfect, mistake-making road that we want our teens to be on. Is your kitchen going to be a mess when there's a hard-boiled egg exploded all over it? Absolutely. But then they get to learn how to clean up after themselves too. When your girls get lonely or bored, guess what? They might reach out to a friend instead of mom. They might be brave and invite them to go bowling or roller skating or something fun and different. They might ask a friend to meet them at a coffee shop to flirt with the cute barista behind the counter. That is wonderful. Taking emotional risks is the best way to prevent social anxiety. Celebrate your daughter's bravery. We need more teenagers willing to take the social lead. We want to praise them, celebrate them when they do these awkward, scary things. Even when they explode eggs in the microwave, we want to praise them like for take trying something new and different and trying to be creative, making up their a new way of cooking food or whatever. We still can celebrate the mistakes. Our job is not to make our kids comfortable. Our job is to encourage them to live in the growth zone. The growth zone lies between the comfort zone and the discomfort zone. It's this growth zone. When we live here, life feels exciting. We build resilience by taking risks. We fall on our face and we try again the next day. We learn, we fail, we grow, we try again. This is living. So, It's time to let go of the old beliefs that were true when they were babies. It's my job to make them comfortable and update the brain to raising adolescents by adopting the belief it is my job to make them uncomfortable. Remember, children learn by imitation more than any other way. So if you are struggling to go outside your comfort zone, take on new challenges and allow yourself to make mistakes, then starting with yourself is the first order of business. Make a new friend. You get to go on an adventure. You can hire a life coach and then brag to your girls about how proud you are of yourself. Soon the whole family can grow together and celebrate each other's risk-taking and growth. Today's Supermom Kryptonite, when being around your child drains all your energy. Okay, this is a hard thing to describe, but it's important to recognize. So if you feel drained after spending time with your kid, listen up. All kids drain their mom's energy to some degree, right? Because they're constantly demanding and they need things and you're they're pulling your attention outside of yourself. So that's going to be tiring. But some children have the ability to drain it in a kind of a unique way. The best way I've found to describe it is like the kid's battery is running low, their energy battery is running low, and they plug into their mom as an outlet. And they use mom's energy to power themselves up. Now, most of us, when we're running low on energy, we power up with sleep, rest, zoning out, staring to space, solitude, food, 
or just relaxing in the sunshine with a good book, right? It's normal for young kids to feel calmed and comforted by their mom's presence, but this is different. Some kids will power up their energy by taking it from their mom. The moms I've coached who are stuck in this predicament have a hard time getting help for it because it's so hard to describe. I'm always so glad when they find me, they find my podcast and they come to me for life coaching because I, this is such a no-win situation and it really needs addressing and I don't feel like it's uh, talked about enough in parenting circles. Kids need to learn to fill up their own energy tank and moms need as much energy as they can get. So if you know anyone who seems to lose themselves around their kids, turns into kind of like a zombie mommy where you're going through the motions, but you're not fully present and alive. If that happens after spending just a short amount of time with their kid, because of course it's always, it's going to happen to most of us after, you know, 80 hours a week. Um, But if it's, it happens pretty quickly or perhaps you know a mom who feels fully alive away from their kids vibrant and full of energy but sort of flat lines when they're around their kids please send them this podcast and encourage them to schedule a free discovery call because this is a kryptonite like no other So sometimes this energy draining phenomenon looks like a child loving on mom, touching, demanding eye contact. If you see where the kids like turn mom's head so that they have to look them and they hold their cheeks and they like force eye contact and intimacy. This can look like a child pulling and clinging and wanting to be physically and emotionally intertwined. So sometimes it looks like love. Other times, it looks like a child throwing emotions at mom. So this is another one that's hard to explain. So I'll give you an example. A child stubs her toe, immediately looks over at her mom, glares at her and says, mom, with blame in her tone of voice. As though it's mom's fault she stubbed her toe. It's like child experiences some sort of, emotional wound and it immediately gets thrown at mom like I feel terrible and it's this (laughs) I just can't think of another way to explain it it's somehow like it's your fault basically mom and it's very much a pulling mom into an enmeshed situation so I want my mom to feel the way I feel right now in this moment okay So some children want to be alone with their negative emotions. Others want to wail and throw tantrums. Others blame their siblings or the stupid furniture that got in the way and made them trip. Energy draining children will come sit right in front of mom, look her in the eye with a what are you going to do about it expression (laughs) or just a I can't function without you sort of helplessness. It's as though these draining kids have the subconscious belief that mom is the cause of unwanted emotions and the cure for positive ones. It is unhealthy for both parties. So please seek help if this resonates with you at all. Today's super mom power boost is to relinquish your authority. Ah. Such a delight. If you are used to being in charge, making decisions, coordinating, planning, executing, it is so nice to be able to relinquish your responsibility once in a while. Even if you like doing these things, you're super good at them, it's easy to find yourself taking on this role in every area of your life where you are the boss at work, you are the boss at home, you are the boss in every the family vacations that you are in charge of coordinating. If you're good at these things and you enjoy them, you end up doing it a lot. So if you are a high-powered super mom with a lot of people relying on you, 
Get a boost of energy by surrendering your authority to someone super capable. So I want to tell you why this is my super mom power boost. Because when I was traveling with my brother last week, I had never traveled with my brother before. And usually when I travel, I do all the planning and the coordinating and all that. But I got to travel with my brother, who's a seasoned traveler, much more so than I. And it was so delightful to be able to relinquish control over this planning and coordination of the trip. I was just a passenger riding on coattails, and it was delicious. He is very capable. He also has more command of the language been to Paris many times before. So it made sense to let him figure out the transportation, the accommodations. Well, I just went along for the ride. And even though it was a little bit uncomfortable because it was outside my comfort zone to like not know (laughs) and not be the one in charge, it was kind of like being a kid again. It was so relaxing. Not only did I get a break from my routine and a change of scenery, but I got a break from the role I usually play, and I thoroughly enjoyed not being in charge for a little while. It's the same feeling I had around my yoga teacher. I could take my worn out, stressed out body, plop it on a mat in her yoga studio, and just put myself in her hands and trust her to bring me back to a calm, energized state. I miss it because she's retired now and she doesn't have her yoga studio anymore. But all I had to do was show up and she just told me what to do and I did it. I didn't have to think. (laughs) It was just wonderful. So if you're used to being in charge and you like it done a certain way, it can be really hard to let go of control. My suggestion for you, today's Superman Power Boost, is to keep looking until you can find someone competent, someone who gets you, someone who you can trust that is a bigger expert than you are. This is what I offer in my time for the talk class, right? For, so for one month, you do not need to be the expert in all things puberty and sex education. You get a break from being the fountain of knowledge, and you get to just sit alongside your kiddo in a relaxed, interactive learning environment. And so it's it's such a nice way to end the day because we have classes in the evenings. You know, you're just like, ah, I'm done being in charge. I get to be a student and learn alongside with my kid. It's lovely. I found the similar experience at family camp. I don't know if anybody's ever gone to family camp, but this is the greatest invention for a mom that I had ever encountered. I'm there with my kids and my family. I'm getting to enjoy their company, but I am not in charge. Competent people are arranging the activities, doing the driving, the cooking, the dishes. It was heaven. All I had to do was show up (laughs) and enjoy and not be in charge. And so when you're not in charge, then the kids are less likely to argue. Like they'd be like, I don't want to go to the beach today. or I don't want to go rafting. It's like, that's the plan. It's on the calendar. It's on the chalkboard. Somebody else did it. We either show up or we don't, but they don't argue as much when it's not mom doing the planning. So family count, another one. If you are the captain of your family ship, find a way to sit in other people's ships once in a while and try to let other people take the lead. It is so worthwhile. I promise you the opportunities exist out there. You just need to find them and talk to your other mom friends. Post it in the Super Moms Getting Tired Facebook group. Where do you get to just relinquish your authority and enjoy somebody else very capable of being in charge? I'd love to get some more ideas for these hardworking super moms who are ready for a break because you deserve a break, super mom. Today's quote of the day, it is not what you do for your children, but what you have taught them to do for themselves that will make them successful human beings. Anne Landers. Thank you so much, super moms, for listening. I will love you and leave you. I hope you have an excellent day. 
want a free life coaching session? Go to lifecoachingforparents.com and schedule yours today. And thank you so much for listening. I would love it if you would subscribe and share these podcasts with your friends. If you have a question you'd like me to answer on the air, go to lifecoachingforparents.com slash record my question and you can send me a voicemail recording or write me an email and I'll answer it on the air. Thanks again. Have a great day.